And never had there been a Jesuit pope because you weren't supposed to have a Jesuit pope because it was supposed to be the watchdog for the Catholic Church. Zagami, I want to take a few final calls with you. I appreciate all your time, but talk a, a little bit about the the Jesuits founded by the you know military officer uh, in Spain, in Portugal, Loyola, all of that. And because I have some Catholics email me, call me, and they go, who says you can't have a Jesuit pope? Well, why was there never one before? Then I want to get into the astrology and a few final phone calls. Well, there was never really a written rule, but it was an unsaid rule. A few years back, I remember in a forum of Jesuits, this question arise, and of course they said it's an unwritten rule, but we don't usually traditionally have a Jesuit pope. This was, uh, as I said, a few years back. It's interesting, I think, in all this uh, context, uh, the prophecies that were given by a nun called Anne Katerina Emmerich, uh, because uh, the prophecies of this nun, uh, I want to just mention a little passage to, to make you understand how accurate they are. I saw also the relationship between two popes. I saw how baleful will be the consequences of this false church. I saw it increases in size. Heretics of every kind came into the city of Rome. The local crazy grew lukewarm. I saw a great darkness. This was a nun that was almost made a saint by the Catholic Church and is a beata, which is an in-between stage when you are nearly getting to sainthood. So it's not the words of... That was a German uh, nun, right? Like 400 years ago? This, uh, this, well, she was basically born. I tell you the exact uh, between. She was born in 1774 and she died in 1824. Oh. And uh, she was very important for her visions. The church saw her as very important, and she said, "The church is in great danger. We must pray." Uh, you know, and, and she saw this. I mean, it's quite incredible that she saw the scenario of the two popes like we are having these days. I mean, it's, it's shocking. Well, all I know is whether it's the universities or whether it's the, the Protestant church, all of it is now just promoting world government, promoting the end of the family. I mean, I've gone to family churches that were kind of mainline Methodists that now sound like a Soviet brainwashing camp. I mean, uh, I've gone to Baptist churches that sounded conservative that now sound liberal, uh, and they're just following their central directives, World Council of Churches, 501c3, government controlled. Uh, it is bad. I mean, it, and now I know folks in those different psychology departments of universities, it's like, we're banning free speech. Whites are inherently evil. And this is white people saying this. Uh, uh, I mean, it is, it is, they are really making a totalitarian move to crush the West. Uh, a, do you agree with that? And then B, why does the elite want to crush the West, the source of their power? Well, because uh, the next source of the power has to be at a global level. So they don't care if they crush a specific culture because they want to promote their mondialist culture. So, uh, of course, they crush the nationalism as well as they crush religious identity. If it's not, uh, of course, controlled by them in some way, if it's not part of their world. So there's a thousand different babbling groups of morons fighting with each other with central government, central religion playing referee. Absolutely. And uh, I mean, now that we saw the Pope being the spiritual leader of this new world order and Obama being, uh, you know, we have on one side uh, the false prophet and Obama basically being the Antichrist of the situation. I'm not saying that he is the Antichrist. But it's an Antichrist spirit. It's a model of the great one to come. As the Bible says over and over again, there's waves building precursors test towards the final. But uh, the technology that we have uh, these days is not the one we had a few hundred years ago. So what these people are doing these days, uh, it's, it's incredible. And of course, uh, is of much bigger proportions and reaches every single side of this planet. There is no way of escaping. So them, now we know? finally have the technology for everyone worldwide to see the beast in the same hour and to see the talking machine in Jerusalem and to see the miracles and to see all the things that are described that is pure science fiction then, now reality. Yes, and, uh, and there is also, as I mentioned in the, that documentary we did in Rome, uh, the situation of Our Lady of Medjugorje that is creating uh, still a lot of problems within the Catholic Church. And now there is being the mysterious death of a priest uh, recently in Medjugorje, and uh, people are starting to wonder if in some way this death is connected to the fact that the Vatican wants to uh, cast out the Medjugorje visions from their belief system. 
because they are contrary to the, what the Vatican is doing these days. Sherry in Texas, you're on the air with uh, Leo Zagami. Go ahead. Yes, I'm still here. Um, I just think that um, Christ, who is divine, um, became who we were in our humanity as well as, as in his divineness to let us know that we can see and live beyond the worldly view. The world is our way. It reflects us. All our lack of brotherhood from sea to shining sea is all reflected in the world. But Christ came to show us a new way. And, and I think there is something in the Pope that I have to stand up for because he seems to be able to see beyond the worldly view. And that's why a lot of his things see, seem contra, contradictory to what the world has always held really from a religious standpoint, from a Christian standpoint. Like, like, like homosexuality, Alex, I don't want to get off on other subjects, but was it not perhaps not homosexuality, the translation, but shouldn't that have been pedophilia but there that word wasn't available well, i mean i think christ you know was not there judging people and he and, and folks could always repent and, and so i hear what you're saying and i appreciate your call but ma'am what the jesuits put out is pure ford foundation globalism liberation theology they fill the immigrants full of hatred many of them still have a lot of beautiful wonderful people but they fill them full of all this class envy all this garbage and so he's spewing the 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 new world order project of deindustrialization and balkanization and the end of national sovereignty. And so he sounds all nice up at the top, but when you know the larger agenda, he's pushing what the most vicious evil globalists want. And you see them giving power to him and all the world leaders lining up, fawning after him, except for Putin. And it's just, it's wild to watch. Leo, quick comment on that. Thank you, ma'am. Well, it's uh, very important uh, to realize that uh, a few years, I mean, I think it was around 2009, 2010, for example, there was a guy called Don Verze, he's very powerful in the Vatican setup. He just died a couple of years ago. He was starting to promote microchipping. Just to, to, uh, it was just an example to let you know that I think the values that the Catholic Church is promoting are very far from the Christian values of Jesus. And they are as far as you can get and have nothing to do with it. Well, that's it. I mean, it's more and more lined up with world government. It's lined up with the technocracy. It's lined up with the mark of the beast. Technocracy. Technocracy that was something that was invented by Count de Simon, who lived in the period, I think it was between 1774 and 1825. Count de Simon was the guy who actually created the basic idea of technocracy that will later be developed by various people in this uh, in this setup that now became the new world order, which uh, of course uh, took over also the concept of synarchy. And um, what they want to do now is uh, to use all these technocrats uh, to take over all the various uh, governments, these technocrats who don't really have a soul, they don't really represent the people. We already have them in place here in Europe. You, you fortunately still don't have them in the US as much as you have them here, even if Obama in some ways is a technocrat. But the ones over here look really the part. They have glasses, they have their own Troika agenda, and they're really 100% soulless. And they are zombies of the New World Order who work to achieve power for the families on top that dominate then the high finance, the Vatican together with them. Because, of course, there is a whole setup together with the Vatican made of certain families or certain interests. There is also other religious leaders involved. We have seen this. I mean, it's a melting pot that in the end wants to install this world government. And this is really the kickstart of it. It is in front of the eyes of the whole world. I mean, the Italian prime minister just uh, uh, declared Agenda 2030 to be a great thing and that uh, we should all look into it. And it, it means the end of the family, power. private property, everything. I mean, they are bringing in a hellish world saying no vacations, no meat, no air conditioning, no nothing. Uh, just smiling at us with, and then blocking in, uh, clean industrialization. I mean, this and is the end of humanity. Trillions, Alex, because this Agenda 2030 needs trillions. Who's going to give trillions? 
I mean, they want like five trillions a month out of us. I mean, they will simply destroy the economies of all countries by doing this. Absolutely. It's a total consolidation where we're so poor they can dictate absolute terms to us. It is pure evil. Robert in Missouri are on the air with Leo Zagami. I'm Alex Jones. Go ahead. Hey, hey, Alex and Leo, check this out. When the Pope spoke before the United Nations, have your boys, Alex, cue this up right at the beginning where he starts his remarks. He says, I come in my own name and in the name of the Catholic community. Well, check out John 543. I am come in my father's name and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. I Whoa, exactly. I He's like following stuff I've read in like serious, you know, FBI criminology reports about Satanism. What the real Satanists do is they, they blaspheme and change everything that's key in the Bible. So he says, Christ failed at the cross. The cross is a failure. Guys, cue up uh, uh, Pope Francis' UN address. I want to see that. He said, I come in my own name. Repeat that again. Yes. The very first remarks out of his, his mouth, the translator will say it. I flipped out, Alex. I was, he says, I come to you in my own name, in the name of the Catholic community. He did not come in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I never saw him do the sign of the cross while he was here, any of that stuff. This guy is an imposter, and I tell you what, when you cue that up, the first remarks out of his mouth, when he says, I come in my own name, it reminded me of that biblical prophecy, and it really just threw a red flag up in my, in my spirit. And uh, the one lady that said when Jesus was on the cross and he said, um, Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? He was actually fulfilling a Bible prophecy from the Psalms when King David was on the run from King Saul. King David said that in the Psalms. Everything Jesus did was fulfilling an Old Testament prophecy. He was God. He didn't lose his faith. He was actually re-quoting stuff out of the Psalms, just like them casting lots for his garments. Everything he did was a fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecies. He fulfilled over 300 of them, and that's how you know he's the, he's the real thing. And I just wanted to throw that out there. But go to that beginning of the UN, it'll flip you out because he came in his own name. He did not come in the sure, name of the sure. Lord. Sure, we just put up a New York speech he gave, another speech. We're uh, finding it right now, or I can find it. Um, thank you. So there it is. Transcript. Read the P Pope Francis speech to the United Nations. Here it is. Thank you for your kind words once again following a tradition which I feel honored, the Secretary General of the United Nations, the Pope, to address the Distinguished Assembly of Nations in my own name and that of the entire Catholic community. Wow, so he said, in my name, not in Christ's name. That is unprecedented. You're absolutely right. Uh, so there you go. Time Magazine with the transcript. Thank you so much. Uh, Leo Zagami, I tell you, it just gets crazier, doesn't it? Well, uh, I hope it doesn't get to the point of the mark of the beast being uh, the, 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 the microchip, because at that point, you know, I mean, <laughs> I will, of course, say that uh, everything that's being prophesied is turning out to be true and is dramatically in front of our eyes right now. So we have to pray. Like you said at the beginning of the show, people need to pray for us. I mean, when the Pope went out there the first time and he asked people to pay for him. That was completely wrong because the church should have enough power to actually give his own blessings to the people, not want people to pray. But he's continuing to say that. He always say, pray for me, pray for me. He's getting that. That means energy. pray to him. Yeah, pray to him. That's what, uh, it's not the ad majori dei gloriam, that's the motto of the Jesuits, but it's ad majori dei of him, basically to the glory of himself that he's going to uh, the Castros in Cuba, uh, coming to the U.S. Well, he told Boehner that. I mean, I know if you're in trouble, ask folks to pray for you. I do that too. But yeah, he's supposed to be up there as the church leader saying God's blessing you, not I need the blessing. But he's taking in that energy because he's a vampire. And that's a Satan. That's satanic for you. I mean, that's Satanism to take the energy and to, you see, there is a concept which maybe you're not be familiar with, but I want to introduce you to is the concept of egregore. Have you ever heard of it? Yes. It is the concept. The concept of agro is very important because a number of people together uh, form a thought and this thought becomes an egregore, an entity. Now, the egregore of the Catholic Church is one of the most powerful, being more than a billion people who follow this church. It's a giant mob and psychology. And of course, if he wants them to pray for him, he's just getting this energy for him. He's not releasing anything to the people like the, the old popes used to bless people, be caring towards the others. 
And now he said he wants to take, take, pray for me, pray, because I'm doing this. I have to do it. It's necessary. It's like he's really trapped by his own, uh, you know, his own role in the New World Order. Well, he 